What's up, YouTube? Night Crazy here with Night Crazy Jr. His YouTube channel is uh, CTH2006 if you're interested in going to check him out and sub him up. Um, he needs to get back making videos. He hadn't made it in what, probably a year or two or more? Probably. At least. So you got some different <laughs> knives since then and stuff. So um, what we want to do today is uh, me and him went to Blade Show this year and uh we went last year uh we didn't this first year we only spent one day um this year we spent two days there just me and him and uh i want to go over some of our experiences so maybe some of the negative things about it um, um some of my and his uh, purchases and and what we were able to get and uh so that's what we're gonna do so we uh, we actually live in South Carolina, which is ain't you know only about five six hours away from Atlanta. So we were able to uh, what what we did end up staying in my sister and brother in law's house in Greenville, which is about two two and a half hours away from Atlanta. Um, and so we made the trek in there every morning, every night, back again, back again. So it was a lot of traveling, but that was able to keep our expense down on the hotel, so we could spend more money on knives. Um, so. And that is one of the negative things um, because we, we couldn't experience the, the pit life and things like that at the end where, they, where all the YouTubers can get together and um, chit chat and really get to know one another because by the time the show's over, we've got to get on the road for a two, two and a half hour. And it's, there was one day there was more like three, three and a half hours with that Atlanta traffic. So it, it was a headache. Um, I think maybe next year when we go, we'll probably try to do a hotel somewhere, even if it's not even, you know, if it's two, three miles away, then we can experience uh, Blade Show nightlife um, and, and be able to talk to a lot of the folks. But anyway, so we got there. Um, uh, we didn't have early bird. We have what they call um, cap, pass. cap passes. And uh, we got in line. We was, I think we was able to line up at 12 and... Couldn't get in until about one. They did let us in a little early, which was good. And so when we got in line and we lucked up and we actually literally got in line with um, JT's Knife Life. So uh, we talked a lot there, met him. Him and his wife was there and uh, very nice folks and it's good to meet y'all. And um, so we stood there in line probably 45 minutes or an hour or so. Minutes. And uh, then they let us in, which, like I said, I think they let us in. 12.30. Yeah, like, like 12.30, 12 30. yeah. Uh -huh. So it was like 30 minutes earlier than normal, which was good. Um, but if you're after certain things, if you're just after just, just to see the show and it don't matter to you um, what you're there to get and you're not trying to get the go run to the tables and get the things that sells out in, in minutes, um, then it wouldn't matter. But I was after a whole blade's work um specter one of the new v3s that just came out and i was able to get one obviously number 466 and um i even with getting in there 45 minutes or so later than everybody else uh whole blade works brought i think they said 110 and by the time i got to the table there was probably still 20 people around the table and there might have been 15 or 20 on the table more knives so i was able to kind of Kind of worked my way to the front, <laughs> and uh, I grabbed that one. I was like, "Okay, how much?" And then I grabbed it that this one in particular one I got. I liked the color combo, and I was able to, um, how much? All right, take it. Done. We're, we're done. And then within like three minutes, I was done with the whole blade work. I was happy. That's what I went there for. It was like I could have just went home then. Um, I got my Spectre. Um, so let's show that off real quick. I don't know how good or how far away it is from the camera here, but. I'll try to look at it, look at that color. That is pretty. It's got a lot of the greens. Um, it has the little the little milling on the lower parts that you see here, but on the higher parts, it's flat. Has kinds of bronzy purple hardware and pivot screw, which matches the clip, kind of a bronzy purple. Um, the new holts are 20 CV blade steel. Look at that. Oh, it's beautiful. Nice and smooth. Anyway, so that's what I went to the show for. Um, I was able to get it, I was happy, all right? And then after that, it was just, all right, now let's calm down a little bit. Let's go to some of the other places that we wanted to get. Um, next up was Microtech. Microtech, yep. 
All right, so we went to Microtech and got the Blade Show Microtech. Um, this year comes with a coin. Uh, normally it's like $125 with just for the knife, but this year it was $200 um, because of the coin. They did a, a real silver coin with it. Um, same Ultratech, same blade as like the last, uh, you know, three years. Uh, I don't know why they don't change the blade shape on us. I really don't. I wish they'd do something different. I don't care what it was, just as long as it's something different. But they keep putting that bayonet blade in there. They must have a million bayonet blades around. I don't know why they keep doing that. But this year, it don't say blade show on it. It actually says 25th, 25 year anniversary or something. So um, it says 2019. So anyway, pretty cool. That's that deal. Where did we go from there? You remember? Hinder. Yep, Rick Hinder's booth. For the uh, filler tabs. Yep. We love going to Rick Hinder's booth. I'm a, I'm a Hinder fan. Um, and we both went over to, here's, uh, we didn't buy these Hinder's, but that's my son's Hinder. He's got the buoy. Filler tab. And um, I just got this new fatty um, 3.5 inch with the Warncliffe blade and that black stone wash, which is beautiful. Um, Anyway, I don't know, let's see a little closer. Anyway, the little filler tab right here, if you're not familiar with Hender, they do it every year at Blade Show. <clears throat> this one says 2019 with the little Hender logo on it. And uh, we they went over to- Copper and brass. Copper and brass, yep. And uh, one, I don't know, one little disappointing thing this year, I don't wanna be negative about Blade Show, but you know, like I said, every year, I've, I've gone for the past five or six years, and every year the filler tabs has been free to, Hinder our customers. Basically, you come up and either buy something or talk to them or pull out your hinder that you got in your pocket and say, "Hey, uh, Rick, or hey, whoever's working the booth, can I get the, um, the you know 2016 or 2017, 2018, whatever filler tab for my knife?" And they'll hand you one out their pocket or out the back. But this year, it was twenty dollars. Um, I don't know why. I don't know why we had to charge twenty dollars for a little filler tab for the customers, but. I guess they're in business, make money, right? But this year, what did you get? I got the uh, the patch, like the <laughs> the beer patch. That's Last so year was a taco. Yeah. I got the taco too. Yeah, taco is very popular. Blade show. You wore it this year too, and wore it last year. As soon as you got it, you put the taco right on your um, uh, Velcro there. Everybody was pointing. Everybody out. loved the taco hat. Um, even Rick laughed at it when he saw it. He was like, "Hey, you got a taco hat." But um, this year was. A uh, beer mug. Yeah, I know he's a little uh, little too young for beer, but um, anyway, it's something different. Pretty cool. But anyway, so he's got two patches that says, you know, Hinder with the year on it. So this is the two years he's been. So I'm assuming for next however many years, he's going to make sure he gets the, uh, the patch, right? So yeah. we can commemorate the, the Blade Show time. Let's see. What else did we do? Um, we left Hinder, and we just kind of started walking around from there, I think. We went to DLT and asked them about, like, if it was yeah. still, like, yep, that's if right. they were still doing it. All right, so on Friday at 4 o'clock, DLT Trading did this bad boy, the M390 DLT Trading exclusive with the red G10. They did 100 of them. They brought them to the show, 100. So at 4 o'clock, they started handing out stickers. They had 100 of this red DLT Trading sticker. Is one per person, so one, two people. <laughs> So we both got these, um, that was pretty nice. These are very hard to come by. And while I was there, I saw this sitting on the table. This is their, I don't know, about three, four, five months ago or something, they did a tan handle with 20 CV blades still with the shiny hardware and shiny blade. And it sold out in like four or five minutes. I mean, it was crazy when it sold out. And I saw it sitting there and the price on it was like $130. I was like, wow, uh, I'd definitely take one of them. I said, what's the deal with that? He goes, well, when they got the batch of knives in, um, the boxes, there was about 20 something or whatever knives that the boxes was just torn all to pieces. They couldn't even reuse them. So what they did is they had the knife. If you bought it, they had the knife in the little plastic bag it comes in, the sticker, the paperwork, everything, except minus the box. And I'm like, you know, you know, spider coat, collectors you know we love our boxes so um i guess that's why they dropped the price down so low and i just consider this a great user knife now i'm not going to try to worry about oh it's a collector edition i got the box and all that this is going to be this is going to be a user and he got one too tell uh, the story okay so we 
after we got that knife, we walked over to the Spider Co. We got like the pins. Yeah, yeah, pretty good. We got about this, that. the, it was the Paramilitary 3. Yep, yeah, Paramilitary pair 3, uh, little, little hat pin uh, that you put on your hat or whatever. Um, every year, that's another thing at Blade Show, every year they do a little pin. And um, so I was like, he, he opened the box and he was like checking it and I, I liked it and We're I talking asked about this. Yeah, yeah that knife I asked if we could walk back over there like or when they have the red ones yeah. if I could get one so I got one I really liked it and then we we got back to home back yeah. to South Carolina and um, a buddy of mine that I worked with had two he didn't have any. He didn't get in on the deal when they first did these, but he did get his uh, his max order, which is two of the. Of these. And of that is the black edition. Hold it up a little more. Which one? That is the black blade twenty CV with tan and the black hardware and everything, which is the same exact knife except this is shiny and that's black. And he and he had the box for his two, brand new in the box, and he he actually wanted his knife. He said, "I'll just trade you for it if you want to." Yeah. And he saw it. Uh, he loved. He got. He I, fell in I love, love with the black, the black. blade. So um, he he made it even trade for him. So that was pretty cool. So now he's got a black one, and that, now my buddy actually has the black and the shiny, which completes his set. And so do I. I have a black and a shiny. Um, let's see. We uh, after that. Um, I, I'm the whole time. I'm trying to look for you know YouTubers and and Frankie and Bird. I'm trying to look for everybody, and I just we. There's so many people there, so hard to find anybody. And um, and that was day um, So I went over to the uh, KME friends over at the KME booth and saw uh, Brian Knife Guy and, and Kyle and, and all the guys there. And it was a, a, about one, about three of them that wasn't there this year. The Ron and uh, his brother Mike and his wife that normally works there and they, they were uh, having medical issues or something and, and they said they couldn't be there, was sick or whatever. So. Um, they had uh, a few other people working the booth with them, and I met those guys and hung out for a while. And um, good to see them, like always, every year. And we left there, and we actually ran into Slicey Dicey over at the Freeman. Yeah. Freeman Knives booth. He's looking at a knife. Yeah, he was looking at one of the Freemans, and I said, "I said, what's up, Slicey?" And he looked, and we chit chatted for a good 10, 15 minutes, and and he pulled out his. TRM, Three Rivers Manufacturing, the new Atom. He, he bought the uh, one with the carbon fiber, which was very nice. And he said, oh yeah, he said, I just, I, I think at the time that was like his only purchase right then. And uh, he said, well, this is what I got already. So I'm kind of happy I got that they, before they sold out. I was like, oh, let me see that. I said, oh, I said, where are they? I, I hadn't seen them yet. And they said, way in the far corner, way back there in the back. I said, oh, okay. He said they're probably already sold out though because they only had so many of the atoms that they brought with them. Um, they did G10 and Micarta and carbon fiber and all that kind of stuff. I said, oh, okay. And I really didn't think about it much no more because I'm thinking, yeah, it got to be sold out already. Um, so we chit chat a little while and, you know, I, I flipped it and I was like, man, I'd like to get a hold of one. And it was kind of nice. I mean, this is a uh, very thin, very smooth, no, no bearing, no thrills, uh, 20 CV made in the USA. Look at that. I mean, look at this drop. I mean, that nice action. And they're like $200 range. So I was like, man, I need to get a hold of one of them. And um, so I'll tell you that about day two on Saturday is when I ended up going back because I saw it on Instagram. Um, they brought more and they and put them out the second day. Yep. That what they did is they didn't, like everybody does, they flood the mark, they flood the table out on Friday, they sell out and then they're done and they don't have any more. What they did is sold what they had and they kept some on back on reserve. And so they started, they sold another batch on Saturday for Saturday people, which I saw on Instagram. So I ran over there one of the first things on Saturday morning and I grabbed, I held, I could have got the carbon fiber, I could have got the Macarta, I could have got any of them, but I love this texturing on this G10. And come to find out it's the cheaper one. It's like 189 and it's like 199 for Macarta and like 209 or something for carbon fiber. They have red and green Macarta. Yeah, red and green Macarta. Um, but they were real slick and uh, you know, this texture, if you're familiar with PM2 texturing, it feels just like, it's like almost like they, they got it from the same factory um, with that texturing job. But I just I just love the texturing, and that's what I went with. Um, I didn't care that, I, mean, I could have got whichever one I wanted, but I just 
is one, one of the one I like. So I'm kind of happy with this knife. There'll be a review on this knife. There's going to be a review, actual whole video to hold. And um, I don't need to do PM2s. You know, there's a million videos of those. Um, also on day two, I went by the Steel Wheel booth and got this. Uh, this is the F11 um, called the Datingu. Datingu? <laughs> say that three times fast um anyway it's a nice little budget i uh, got this in for review from them um g10 no liners just all g10 got one the uh, actual liner lock is kind of a little half liner deal um d2 steel it's no kind of drop shut kind of knife no thrills i mean but it is so snappy you hear that sound i mean that is that is awesome i like that sound anyway be looking for that there'll be a review coming of that um I don't have it on the table right now, but I got a, um, a, uh, a dagger, uh, the new Vendetta, uh, got for review. It's already on the channel. That's why I don't have it sitting right here right now. Already made the review on it. But, um, shoot, so. Uh, second day, it was second just like day. a day. Yeah, it was just kind of, you know what? We were so tired and exhausted by the time we got back and went to sleep. We got up the next morning, got in about 9.30 or so, back to the late show, and, um, we walked, I mean, I almost walked right by Frankie and Bird from Bird Shop 4, and uh, and I was like, hey guys, and they were running to do something. They wanted these uh, not giveaways or something, I don't know, but they really didn't have time to lotteries. talk, and lotteries or something, yeah. Um, so they kind of flew by us, and uh, we said hey, and that was about it. Um, we ran into, Wild Bill from Instagram. I don't think he does videos, but he's on Instagram. We ran him. Uh, Zelric from the Wee Booth. Um, who else? Anybody else? Uh, I don't think ran so. into um, JT's Night Lives a few times during the show. Um, what else? Uh, let's talk about a few negative things. One of the negative things I don't like about Blade Show no seating. Yeah, that. Come on, Cobb Galleria. I'm sure Blade Show pays a lot of money to be there. Why can't you have benches, seats, uh, chairs. sleeping bags, uh, beanbag chairs? I don't care. Somewhere to sit down because if you've never been to Blade Show. You're standing that, up all the time. All day long. You're standing and walking miles and miles. And your feet will start stinging. It feels like needles sticking on the bottom of your feet after it's like, a while. It, it's so bad. Yes. Um, so, so what you do, you end up finding some corner somewhere out in the hallway just to sit down on the floor. We found a window sill. Yeah, window sill right near the escalators. If you've been in Blaze Show, you know that's the window sills is where everybody starts sitting because they're exhausted, tired of standing. You see um, people sitting around like Blade Show, like yeah. sitting around on the walls. Yep, yeah, absolutely. And you know, in Blade Show, obviously in the show itself, there's not going to be any room for uh, chairs and all that sort of stuff. I understand that, um, but outside. come on, outside in the lot, in the lobby, in the hallway, and all that kind of stuff. And listen, I know downstairs, you go downstairs where like Subway and stuff like that is. They got little chairs. All of them are filled. But they're filled. Um, you got thousands of people, and you got 50 chairs for somebody to sit down and eat. Uh, when there's a line at Subway around lunchtime, it, it must be. A hundred people in line to get a sub. And then at the Chinese place, there's like a hundred yeah, more. Yeah, another hundred at the Chinese place. And you go down to um, uh, Murphy's. Murphy's, at Dale Murphy's restaurant. Great hamburgers, by the way. We always go there every year. We went there the first, first day for lunch. And there's a line there, you know, if you're going at lunchtime. So it, no matter what, there's a line. And I understand, I don't care about the line part. It's just, it'd be nice to have somewhere to sit down. Um, so there's that. And what else? What else do we do? Uh, um, obviously, checked out a bunch of knives. You know, I, you know, I would love to have a, you know, come home with twenty five of them of all the everybody's top knives. But you know, my, you, you when you go to Blade Show, you got to think about it this way: you go there. If you're on a budget, you figure out what company, what knife that you'd like to see and what knife you'd like to uh, have, and you kind of make that your plan. You're like, all right, my top knife is Holt. I want to go get me a Holt, um, and you make that your first priority. You go get it. Um, then you, from there, kind of play it out um, how you want to and plan it out to where you would got to go and all. Uh, let's see, who else we see? 
Went by uh, USA Made Blades booth like I do every year and talked to Scott and uh, Kevin and um, and uh, who else? Um, oh, we were looking for a push dagger. Oh yeah, um, my brother-in-law, he, he didn't go this year. He was going to, but then he decided not to and he was looking for a push dagger. And I, you're at Blade Show, right? There's a, a, a gazillion, I don't even know if that's a word, knives. And if yeah, you like, start to look for one particular type of knife... There's like a handful, maybe. You, you're going to say, okay, there's got to be a thousand push daggers here with all these millions of knives. No. Uh, he had to pick the one knife that uh, was almost impossible to find. There was one place that was selling. I, saw, I found a bench made. And we, we didn't want the El Cheapo, you know. We didn't want the, the, the Mall Ninja push dagger. He wanted something halfway decent. And I'm not calling uh, Cold Steel a Mall Ninja knife, but he didn't want, Cold Steel was like 30 bucks, 40 bucks. He, he didn't want that. He wanted more of a higher end premium USA made or something like that. So I found a bench made and I found a, it's R, RJ Tactical. I think, or anyway, I can't remember the name of it. RBJ, R something. MJ. And uh, real nice folks there. They they make one push daggers, and that's the one we ended up going with. It was like one hundred and thirty five dollars. RNJ. Uh, yeah, sticker on the wall. RNJ USA. Yep. And uh, so he went with that one, and uh, he was he said go with whichever one you think you would like. And I said I went with the the most expensive one. <laughs> so. Oh, he got a Microtech too. Oh yes, day two we went back and he. Oh no, the night. Yep, yeah, that, that night we yeah, on the first night we came back, uh, showed him the Microtech. He's never held a sh uh, OTF shoot up front knife, and as soon and like what everybody His does, eyes just popped when open. they pop that knife out, and it's like oh, I want one of these. He's like, how much is that? It's like, it's like 200 bucks. I said, there might be some left. I'm not sure. They, they had a lot left. And uh, I said, he goes, I want one that's a little bigger. They made one bigger? I said, yeah, it's a Combat Trudon. And uh, he's like, well, how much do they run? I said, probably anywhere from five to, you know, customs, you know, crazy high money, but anywhere basic five to $1,000, 500 to $1,000. So he like kind of, he kind of, he gave me a thousand dollars cash and say, you know, Try, try to keep it. He wanted a Hellhound, and obviously Hellhounds are not the $500 ones. They're they, they just $700 ones or $800. So he got him a um, bronze or tan handle with uh, the two-tone Hellhound blade, and he's in love with it, so he loves that knife. What else? Anything else you want to talk about? Oh, uh, the drink situation. So, like, they have vending machines in the Cog Galleria, and the drinks are, like, two or like one or two dollars for a water and then you go to like where they're actually selling drinks they shut down the vending machines so you have to pay the three or four dollars for a drink uh but now could you you went with cash to the vending machine but they make it credit card only I so think, you could could you use a credit card to get it or it was could, shut down i okay. think you could use a credit right, card but well, you couldn't use cash no cash um so it was credit card only machines so uh Let's see, who else we run into? Anybody? Oh, I met um, Jim Skelton. He was there. Um, oh, we actually, when we went to, I think the second time we went over to the Spyderco booth, well, um, you know, Spyderco booths, I don't even know if they sell knives at the Spyderco booth. I'm not, I think it might be like ZT, um, where they just, it's display only, and if you want one, you got to go to one of their dealers, you know, DLT or GP knives or something. And, um, I'm not 100% sure. I might not be correct about that, but I don't ever remember seeing anybody buy anything there. They're just there looking at everything because, you know, Spyderco's got a, a million different flavored knives. So, um, <clears throat> and, you know, Eric and Sal Glasser was there. And, and uh, Sal came walking down the aisle and I said, uh, I, I told my son, I, I said, uh, I said, he kind of stopped next to him. I said, hey, Mr. Glesser. And he goes, hey, how you doing? And this, that, and the other. He was trying to get into his booth, and he couldn't. There were so many people around the aisle. So he just kind of stopped, and we chit-chatted for a while, and that was kind of fun. And I said, hey, I said, I just want to introduce, this is my son. And I said, uh, I told him, I said, uh, I said, this is Mr. Sal Glesser. I said, he, you know, Spyderco inventor. You know, he, he's he's the godfather, basically. He's He, he created these kind of knives. You know, that's, you know, the, our pocket-type knives, the clip-it knives, you know, because of him, you know, I don't know, somebody else might have done it along the way, but he started it. You know, he's, he's the godfather when it comes to that. But anyway, and he said, hey, how you doing? He chit-chatted with us for a while. Very friendly, you know, very nice guy. So that was kind of fun. Um, Smoky Mountain Knife Works, the first day, 
Last year they gave away like this pack of like playing cards and like a hank or like a rag. And then uh, this year on the first day they gave away a hat. It was like gray, it was like a mesh hat, like a trucker style hat. And then the second day they gave away the same hat but a black version. Yeah, and that's pretty cool. You figure we like we got the hats, the the kind of white gray one, and we went home and we put it in the house and and uh, we didn't wear it back in case we get another hat. We can put it on. And we got back and said, "Well, do you think we need to get another um, uh, Smoky Mountain Knifeworks hat?" And as soon as I walked up, I said, "Oh yeah, we're definitely getting a new one because a whole different color. I mean, it was a whole different style hat. You know, where one was stiff and one was the squishy type where it kind of squished down. And so a whole, you know, not just different colors, different everything. That was pretty cool." Um, so they, they had different options for different people. Um, what else? Got a free t-shirt from those people in yeah. the front. There was um, some kind of, I think it was a uh, veteran type deal or something in the front they were doing. Um, giving away shirts. All you had to do is put your email address in and got a shirt. So I asked them if they had a uh, big boy size and uh, they got it. They said, we got 3X. And I'm like, eh, you know, if it's not a 3X tall and that kind of stuff, it turns into a belly shirt for me, you know, a little small shirt. So I said, I said, give it him an extra large. It will do, it. you know, he can have it. So he ended up with the shirt. I hate to get a shirt and then realize it won't fit. And then nobody else can wear a 3X in the family. So I just give it to him instead. What else? Um... Get something anyway. Um, sorry, guys, we didn't have any. We just want to talk about Blade Show, and I think we pretty much about talked out. Um, got Subway the second day. We got Subway. We did Murphy's. Got Subway the second day. Um, their subs. I don't know if any of y'all ate at Subway, <clears throat> and you eat at Subway at where you live, whatever state you live in, or wherever. Do you think that the Subway, that the actual bread at this Subway was a lot smaller than your bread at Subway at home? Mine was. I know my, our bread is kind of this wide at home, and this one was extremely thin. So I don't know if that's a, I don't know if that's a thing they're doing. To, okay, we'll we'll charge you a little more money or the same price and give you a lot smaller sub. Anyway, I noticed that because um, we went down there hungry, and I got to. I said, hmm. I said, I said that bread looks a little smaller than normal. <laughs> Oh, and uh, I got that other hat. Yeah, I forget what company that it was. It was like from. Chet or something. Uh, they, I think they sold uh, like some kind of knife making equipment or something. I can't remember what it was. Like a drill. Yeah. It's the place, if y'all were there, it's the place that gave away the uh, the yellow um, screw and nut size thing. It was real nice having your garage. If you don't know what size bolt you have, you can stick it into little holes and tell you. Same place it was giving away those. Um... But anyway, there was a lot of a lot of YouTubers and things that I wanted to see. I wanted to see uh, <coughs> Daddy O EDC from Instagram and now uh, YouTube as well. <coughs> Never did get to see him. Uh, oh, Nick Shabazz did the <coughs> Batman thing the next day of. Yeah, Friday. on Sunday, Shabazz did a came. He went to the uh, Benchmade booth and did the no, Batman. No, uh, Blade HQ. Not uh, Blade HQ. I don't know why I said Benchmade. Uh, Blade HQ booth and. Um, uh, up speaking like of Blade man. HQ, I, I picked up a uh, copper Microtech, and it got blue stuff all over my <laughs> hands. It was, I, I guess, from being handled already by so many people. Um, it was heavily patinaed already. You know how brand new ones in the bag come, it'd be real shiny copper. Well, this one was um, already turning, um, and he, he played with it a little while and put it down, and the stuff was all over his hands. So I don't know what that was about, but um, it was heavily patinaed and already... Already almost like turning like green, you know, copper turns green, but, um, God, I know I'm going to end up forgetting. Oh, and, and Blade H, uh, I mean, um, USA made Blade, they did not fire Ronnie, and I don't know how many of y'all going to know what I'm talking about, ever watches the, um, the live show USA made Blade does on Thursday nights at 10 o'clock, um, Eastern time. Anyway, every episode they talk about firing Ronnie. Um, he's an older gentleman that works um, at USA Made Blade some and helps out. And uh, he's a he's a big talker. And <laughs> Scott always says, uh, witty, Scott Winkton, whatever, he always says, uh, I, I had to fire him again today. But obviously he's being funny. But 
Um, maybe some days he might be telling the truth, but <laughs> but anyway, he was working there. And, uh, we knife didn't give away the hats this year. Yeah, we knives didn't have any hats. I think the only thing they had was little stickers. I think. We got a bunch of cool patches. Yeah, cool. Every year. Uh, this, this is his goal. All right, he's got his backpack on. Every table he can find a free patch or a free sticker or a free pen or a free hat, it's going to be in his book bag. He's going to come back and he puts them out on the table or his bed and goes, look at all the stuff I got. Which Pins. is, I, we, and they are everywhere right now, but I should have had them all over the table. It could have been a whole table full of stickers and stuff. But as you see behind me, this is where my stickers go. Uh, I got a, it's my garage. I do a little sticker wall. Uh, I've got more over here on this wall that you can't see, but um, uh, that's my little, that's my knife, my, my knife wall back there, my fun wall. And <laughs> what else? Um, anything else you want to talk about? I think that's about it. I think that's about it. We are 31 minutes in. I didn't, I didn't do too much, too bad. But um, <clears throat> anyway, he needs to. Upload more. Upload more. He's, I, I'm going to make him do it this weekend, if not in the next few days. He's going to get at the same table. We're going to leave it all set up right here. And you're going to get right here and make some videos. All right? And yeah, people subscribe to you because they want to see what's going on. And I think the last time you made a video, you were like a little kid, a little tiny like kid. nine. <laughs> and now you're 13, 13 years old. So um, time to make something new because you've got a lot more things. You've gotten an XM18 since then. And... Um, Nice pair of twos and stuff. A lot of the ones you've seen is that uh, old video. Um, he don't have those no more. He kind of traded those in for more, for a uh, higher Equality. end, more higher quality, put it that way. So um, it's not about quantity anymore. It's about quality. That's what I'm trying to teach you. I'll tell that story <laughs> like what? tomorrow. Oh, uh, with them, uh, with uh, your channel. Mm -hmm. Anyway, like I said, his channel is CTH2006. Um, you can go check him out if you want to. Uh, if we'd have known better, I could, we could have called him Night. It could have been Night Crazy Junior. Um, it's kind of neat because um, Brian, which is Knife Guy on uh, YouTube. He made an Instagram yeah. store. <clears throat> and he said, um, while he was there, he did a little Instagram deal um, with his phone. And he said, Night Crazy's in the booth. And I said, hey. And then he kind of scanned over here. Night Crazy Junior's here. So it was kind of neat that um, he could have uh, done that. But I think we're about done. Well, if y'all stuck around this long, I appreciate it. Um, thanks for watching. Um, I think we might do more of these kind of videos. I think it's kind of fun. Um, tell, what's, fun. tell what's going on and chit chat with everybody. And I think he's getting a little more used to making videos. He's not smiling and laughing so much <laughs> when he was he younger. He, he, yeah, he didn't know what to do with himself. So um, I think he's done a lot better this year. So if you, um, for some reason, blinked earlier when I had this holdout, here it is again. Look at that beauty. Um, I don't know if it's gonna be for sale or not. I don't know. I don't, I'm not a big, uh, I don't consider myself a knife collector. I'm a knife enthusiast. Um, I love handling knives. I love getting new knives in. I love making videos. And when the newness wears off, um, it's time to move on and get something else. So um, if this right here just absolutely 100% calls your name and you have to have it. Um, this might be for sale in the near future. I'm not sure. Not gonna be cheap. I'll tell you that right now. Um, I won't let it go for pennies. So, either way. Oh, that's it? There, what? A, the sticker matches, like the uh, Gerber sticker matches your tattoo. Oh yeah, they, uh, anybody was at Blade Show, they, uh, Gerber had a little sticker with one of their uh, new knives. I can't remember the name of it right now. I'm not familiar with a lot of Gerbers, but uh, they had a cool, like a American traditional kind of tattoo uh, stick, uh, eagle on it. It was kind of like the American traditional kind of tattoos, which is uh, right there. And it's very similar to their um, their uh, sticker. Anyway, I said, I, I walked up, I grabbed a sticker, and I kind of looked at my arm, and he goes, yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of close or something. He goes, yeah, there was some guy that got the, the Gerber logo tattooed on him. I'm like, oh Lord. I could think of a lot more company names to put on anything <laughs> Gerber. But uh, if anything, put the cool Holt line or the Microtech claw or something like that, you know, even the Hinder horse, flaming horse head is pretty cool. But uh, Spider Co. Tick or something. But, 
Oh, uh, Will Moon was in the big room this yeah, year. Yeah, Will Moon was in the big room this year. If um, if you're a Will Moon fan, he moved over from the, what we call it, the small room. It's still a large room, but the secondary overflow room. They're going to they gonna have, to be, they gonna have to find a new place because I hear right now, the secondary room was filled. It was so, so crowded. So there is no more. I don't know if they got a third room somewhere hidden that I don't know about, but... If any more companies is wanting to come to Blade Show, or uh, I don't know if there's even room for them, um, which is getting, it's getting bad. Like it's getting the, bad. the middle section where all like the smaller booths are at, it, you walk up there and there's so many people there. Yeah. It's, uh, it's hard to get it, down the I mean, aisles. it's just hard to get down the aisles. It's, I mean, you know, if you've ever been, you it's know. It's hard to take your time. <clears throat> yeah, you, you almost feel rushed because as soon as you stop, like, oh, I'd like to check that out. And you're like being pushed by five other people to get by to the next booth. And you're like, well, I guess I'll just keep walking, you know. Um, I don't know. It's a, it's a great time, but it really, you know, if you've never been, it's a wonderful experience. But it's, uh, it's stressful. It's tiring. It's like, it's like a, a busy vacation. You know, you need a vacation from your vacation. You, you need, you need two, three days off from work when you uh, get back from Blade Show. It's, it's rough, so. Is that about it? I think Anything? so. All right. All right, we are out of here. I am gonna walk over and cut this camera off and you can look at his smiley face for a little bit. All right, guys, y'all have a great day. Bye. There's go a smiley face. Go subscribe to CTA 2006. There you go, plug it. Plug CTA 2006, go subscribe.